Hey, up. I've sort of had the idea in the back of my head for quite some time um, to make this video. But to be honest, although I know the concepts in my head, I wasn't really sure how to express them. Now, I've still got one more video to do on the Super Meteor. People have been asking me for a touring comparison between the Super Meteor and the Interceptor 650. And I do intend doing that, but we had sort of two weeks solid on the Super Meteor. So I thought I'd just give it a rest for a few videos. Just to give the non-Royal Enfield fans uh, a bit of a rest. Now, like I said, I've been contemplating this video for quite some time, but I think it was while I was sort of filming this segment that you're watching now that it sprang back into my mind, because although motorcycles are authorised to use the bus lanes on this section of road, it does feel incredibly naughty doing it. You know, all the four-wheel vehicles sort of stuck in a queue and then, um, you know, a motorcycle just scooting up the inside lane. And there are occasions in the past where some drivers have got a bit shirty with me. You know, some people just don't like you making rapid progress up the inside lane when they're stuck in a traffic jam. I'm not entirely sure where the expression road rage first started here in the UK. I suspect it was somewhere round about the beginning of the 2000s. Up until then, it had just been classed as bad driving or aggressive driving. But then TV and later on, of course, the internet started to showcase incidents on the road that just got completely out of hand. And it's sort of become commonplace on our roads now. Now, I think the lack of police presence on our road these days um, are probably partly to blame for this. People just feel unaccountable. So, when behind the wheel of a motor car, or even riding a motorcycle, people tend to act in a, a very aggressive manner that they wouldn't normally do. And I've always found it quite bizarre that people behave this way just because they're on the road when they wouldn't do it anywhere else. Now, I think in some parts it's territorial behaviour. You know, there are many, many species living on this earth that are territorial. Even corals, something that people often think as peaceful and sedentary, are very aggressive animals when it comes to preserving a territory for expansion. And when a coral reef starts to become overpopulated, corals will resort to sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat during the hours of darkness. They'll extend stinging tendrils out to the neighbours, stinging them and causing mortal wounds. Some corals even indulge in chemical warfare, releasing toxins into the water that sort of interact with other coral species around them again killing them off and clearing space so that coral colony can expand and in some cases this can be quite devastating for a coral reef causing mass die-offs something that's often uh, attributed to global warming but it's uh, nothing of the sort it's caused by natural territorial behavior of coral colonies and just like many other species on this earth man is no different we are a territorial species many of us live in houses with gardens and we're very particular to erect fences to keep intruders out preserving and protecting our own little territory and just like those corals uh, you know countries historically have often invaded other countries to you know, create more wealth and obtain more territory for expansion. But a strange thing happened during the 1960s. Now, actually, I think the problem actually started way back in the 1950s, but it only became a major problem in the 1960s. To the point where the government here in the UK started to release um, public information films for showing on TV and in the cinema. And poster campaigns to try and sort of rein in this 
aggressive antisocial behaviour that was starting to manifest itself on the roads. And in fact, I think the Americans had had to go through a similar process back in the 1950s. Now, the premise of these um, public information films were always the same. You'd have a polite, mild-mannered family man, admired and respected by everyone that knew him, but he would turn into a monster as soon as he got at the helm of a motor vehicle. Cutting people off, dangerous overtaking manoeuvres, parking his vehicle dangerously or inconsiderately, and just generally acting like a menace to every other road user that he encountered. A complete reversal of his normal behaviour. Now, I think what really brought this to the forefront is that, of course, during the 1960s, most working people got into a position where they were able to afford a motor vehicle of one type or another. So... The increase in traffic on the roads had created more incidents of conflict, leading to a rise in this sort of antisocial behaviour. Now, in my younger days, I always thought this was just the preserve of car drivers, male and female, because, you know, both sexes indulge in this sort of behaviour. In that while they were inside that car, they considered that to be their territory and you know, that the just were unable to tolerate other people getting in the way. Somehow the precious nature of time and territory had been combined to create this dangerous form of antisocial driving behaviour. Now, maybe it was just the preserve of car drivers initially, maybe it wasn't. But it's quite clear that this sort of behaviour has become like an infectious disease. Most cyclists are just as guilty as of this kind of behaviour as car drivers are. Even cyclists are guilty of it these days and display a complete contempt and lack of regard for other road users. It's just become a sad fact of life on our roads. And it's a behaviour that in so many ways can escalate and endanger other people. We all have egos and some people are better at keeping those egos in check than others. But I personally think the worst thing you can do is fight fire with fire when it comes to these sort of encounters. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth mentality is very definitely not the way to deal with these people. Because very often a rebuke and a a mirroring of their behaviour towards one of these people will just cause an escalation and things get out of hand. And I think that definitely being a gentleman and continuing to be polite and just give these people space is the way to go. For a start, you you shouldn't sort of confuse this behaviour with someone just making a mistake. I actually find supermarket car parks are the most dangerous places to drive these days. I could recount a dozen stories of things that have happened to me in the last year on a supermarket car park. But a few weeks ago, I was travelling down the main sort of roadway or thoroughfare uh, on my way out of uh, the local supermarket car park. And the guy who wasn't really watching what he was doing pulled out in front of me, failing to give way a uh, give way marking on the road. Now I jammed my brakes on to uh, avoid a collision, and he saw me just at the last minute and did the same. And I could see by the look on his face, he was ready for a slanging match. He was ready for some abuse from me, and he was getting ready to throw some abuse back. Because, sadly, that's what so often happens in those situations. Instead, I just smiled at him and politely gestured that he could go first. He could continue his manoeuvre, pull out, and I would follow on. This completely diffused the situation. His scowl melted away into an apologetic smile. He mouthed the words, sorry and thank you, and continued on his way. And that's the way I always try to act in road traffic situations. I try to be thoughtful towards others. I make allowances for people that make mistakes, because we all do it. 
And I always try my utmost to keep my anger and my ego in check. Now, I know that this is quite difficult for a lot of people. Um, human nature is to fight fire with fire. If you're shown aggression, you tend to be aggressive back. That's just the way we're hardwired. Being polite and backing off... I think especially in the male psyche is seen as a sign of weakness you know it's not manly when actually it's quite the opposite turning the other cheek is a sign of strength it's a sign of character it's only the beta male personality that fails to understand that someone who feels inferior to everyone else so the constantly trying to reinforce the superiority the strength but being polite and understanding nine times out of ten will diffuse the situation simply refusing to interact in a counter-aggressive way at worst makes them feel like they've won and they'll just continue on the journey feeling as though they've achieved something at best might make them feel a little bit ashamed of themselves and they will just you know continue on the journey without any further drama there's no point getting into an altercation with someone simply to save face or to rebuke them for doing something wrong it doesn't solve anything it may turn into a dangerous situation if you take part in its escalation which in turn might endanger you know innocent parties other road users who were not involved psychologically getting angry and abusive back at someone else will only serve one purpose it will spoil your day it might unnecessarily delay your journey whereas just even if internally laughing it off being polite letting those people go on the way and then continuing as you were puts you in a better place mentally. I mean, I remember as a young man allowing myself to be drawn into these sort of situations, you know, lack of experience and maturity. And even after it had finished, I stewed on it for hours. You know, it really spoilt my day. But these days, when someone behaves like that towards me, you know, I just let it go over my head and I get on. Because being aggressive back doesn't get you anywhere. I often make reference on this channel to riding or driving like a gentleman. A riding ethos, if you like, that I always try to follow. And it's not about being polite and expecting people to acknowledge your politeness and your manners. It's a tool. And I think that's how gentlemanly behaviour evolved. It's a tool that has the power of diffusion, and it's very effective. You don't sort of encounter many gentlemen these days. It's a forgotten art. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be a pushover. You just have to be considerate, patient, understanding, and polite. You should still maintain an element of firmness in your personality when you're dealing with other people with these sort of people when they're aggressive they expect aggression in return in a way i think some of these people sometimes feed from that but when these people are met with a sort of polite pragmatism they often don't know how to deal with it and instead of continuing to be aggressive they will often calm down some won't but nothing's foolproof i found as i get older that you know polite firm patient non-aggressive behavior gets you much further in life it opens far more doors and opportunities to you than being cocky demanding and aggressive does in fact you know that latter behavior he never gets you anywhere now don't get me wrong i don't stop uh every side road when i'm driving along to let people out there are times when it's appropriate to let people out and there are times when it isn't i'm not suggesting that you know that's how you should as a general course behave 
But being thoughtful and going out of your way to accommodate other people on the road, you know, looking out for their safety as well as yours, is a very sensible way to conduct yourself when you're driving. We all know that we all have that devil on our shoulders when we make a mistake, when we do something wrong. We're angry with ourselves and we're embarrassed. And in a situation where another road user makes a mistake, they feel just the same. And sounding your horn as a rebuke or shouting abuse at them or making rude hand gestures will just fuel that reaction. So don't do it. Be pragmatic. Be polite. Make allowances. I know other people often won't do the same for you when you make a mistake or you do something wrong. But that doesn't mean that it's right for you to do it to someone else. And I would like to think that if everyone took that mental approach on the road, our roads would be a much nicer place to be. And let's face it, a lot of these restrictions that we're seeing being imposed on drivers these days are a result of that kind of behaviour, that uh, aggressive, antisocial attitude. Give it a try and see what happens. Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you've enjoyed this video, if you would leave a like, and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Feed the algorithm, it helps me out no end. I will of course be back on Friday, so until then, please, ride safely and courteously, and I'll see you soon.